What's up, everyone? It is your boy, Seagull on Speed 252, and this is your first time stopping by. Well, guess what? My name is Clarence, and I want to thank you all for pushing that play button. Also, as you all know, this is a clip when the C8 Vintage Corvette was unveiled. This was a teaser video. With that being said, Chevrolet has announced when they plan to unveil the convertible slash spider of the C8 Vintage Corvette, and I want to know how many of you all are really excited about this. With that being said, let's get into the video. If you are one of those who like and enjoy driving, you owe it to yourself to try this car. Twenty twenty Corvette convertible will make its debut on October second, twenty nineteen. Genuinely, how many of you guys are actually excited for the convertible spiders? I know some of you have been waiting on this car for a while now. So before we get into the video, I want to do something for you all, my subscribers. This is going to be unique. Once you subscribe to the channel and click that notification button, send me a picture of that image so I can plug you into my YouTube videos. I want people to see my community. And if you already have subscribed to the channel and definitely had that notification button on. Still also email me a picture as well so I can plug it into the YouTube channel. This is from my good friend Keith over at Corvette Blogger. He says, Chevrolet announced today that the new 2020 Corvette convertible will be making its world debut October 2nd, 2019 with a private invitation event at Kennedy Space Center. The reveal event will happen sometime in the evening based on an invite we saw posted on the Corvette forum today. The unveil invite shares this about the all-new 2020 C8 Corvette convertible. In July, comma, Chevrolet put the supercar world on notice by introducing the mid-engine Corvette 2020 Chevrolet Stingray Coupe. Now, here's a question for all of you. Leave your comments down below. Now, I know a lot of you have already put your deposits in on a C8 mid-engine Corvette Coupe. How many of you all are planning on waiting until... The C8 Miniature Corvette Convertible comes out. Because I know there's a lot of people who love convertibles. And some people have been waiting on this Spider for a long time now. And I know that the Spider thing is something new to the Chevrolet Corvette brand. So how many of you actually are willing to wait for the C8 Miniature Corvette Spider and take off your hold for the C8 Miniature Corvette Coupe? Convertibles have always been in its Corvette's DNA. As the iconic sports car was first introduced as a convertible in 1953, 66 years later, Chevy will proudly build upon his legacy and introduce the most exotic and functional Corvette convertible ever yet, which will be the new 2020 Corvette Spider. I'm not going to lie. I'm super excited for it. I'm personally not really a Spider type guy. I love the coupe because the coupe to me is convertible. But with these options, Chevrolet is going to take over the market. I can tell you right now, a lot of people are saying this is a poor man's Ferrari, but no, this is a man's Corvette. For us, the cars are so fast, the aerodynamics are really a safety issue. It's not like you can just pen any design and then just apply it over the rest of the body. So doing thumbnail sketches, early ideas, it helps us understand the lay of the land more or less, you know, the opportunities that we have within the aerodynamics of this car. When you look at the new mid-engine Stingray, you can see the effect of aircraft design. Lean, uh, purposeful surface development, and in particular, the aerodynamic aspects. In terms of the three elements that play a part in that, drag, of course, that's the efficiency of air going over the surface, cooling, and then downforce, keeping the vehicle stable. Those fundamentals were real important at the beginning. And once you nail those down, then it kind of gets into more of the sculpture of the car. We see the car evolving. And we have this great process where it's part art, so hand sculpting clay, and part digital math-based design. So 
So we sculpt the car, then we scan it, and then we'll use numerically controlled machines to recut that surface back on the clay. You go back to the sculptors, and they go start finessing the car, change the surfaces, make them blend together the way you want. We started at the very front of the car, and at the very center of the front of the car is your highest wind velocity. Uh, we don't want a bunch of air under the car, because that creates lift, so we have a bunch of air dams. This next car will have a hybrid rear spoiler that touches down in the middle and then has flows air under it on the outboard corners. Developing the aerodynamics, there are things that we do so that we can see the, the cause and the effect. The Corvette has heat exchangers tucked away behind all of the openings. The air runs down the side of the car, and then we actually pump that air through the engine compartment, and it's evacuated through the rear wheel openings underneath the car and through vents that we have added to the hatch. It doesn't look like there's any fat in the car at all. All the surfaces are pulled as taut as possible over the mechanicals uh, underneath. And that gives the car a real dynamic energy, something that draws people to it visually. Almost everything is new about this car. And, and of course, for design, we want to leverage that. As we watch the car evolve, we see the themes coming out. We see the car move towards its production shape. We left no stone unturned. We were constantly asking ourselves, could we make something newer, better, more unique? You know, it still had to have the feel and look and maintain the brand Corvette, but um, you know, we, we had to do it in a new and unique way. When I come in and see the sculptors and designers and engineers working around the clay model, stepping back, it's like watching a symphony orchestra with the interplay between all the different people to create a unique personality, a character, a soul for a vehicle that people will absolutely resonate with and love. I would like to take that previous clip and break it down to you to show you some things you didn't get a chance to see, but don't forget to smash that subscribe button and hit that bell button right beside it. For us, the cars are so fast, the aerodynamics are really a safety issue. So leave your comments down below or what do you think about this? But Tad saying the car is so fast that the aerodynamic is more of a safety issue. Do you kind of agree with that? I personally agree with it. I think he is definitely correct with the aerodynamics being a safety issue because once he said early in the clip, you don't want the wind going underneath the car and taking the car off the road. And there's times where I've seen Corvette C7s and drivers who are inexperienced drive so fast that the car literally drifts to the right or drifts to the side near in a ditch or next to a tree. Stable. Those fundamentals were real important at the beginning. And once you nail those down, then it kind of gets into more of the sculpture of the car. I'm gonna stop it right there. I like how Mr. Kurt mentioned the fundamentals are very important. And then you can get into the sculpture of the car. And we all know that is very important because just like I grew up playing basketball, I would not be able to learn how to dunk or shoot a free throw or shoot a jump shot if I didn't work on my fundamentals in the beginning to get me to where I am today. So we sculpt the car, then we scan it, and then we'll use numerically controlled machines to recut that surface back on the clay. You go back to the sculptors, and they go start finessing the car, change the surfaces, make them blend together the way you want. So here's a picture in the left-hand bottom corner that I took when I was out visiting Kentucky. And I can tell you right now, this clay model was pretty cool to see in the inside. It was nice to see something that they used, the fundamental part, to actually create the big part of the C8 mini engine Corvette. And it was pretty cool. I got that picture while I was out there, and I wanted to take it and bring it home to show you all. So I hope you um, enjoy this picture. Developing the aerodynamics, there are things that we do so that we can see the, the cause and the effect. Now, you just heard Mr. Kirk say they do this for cause and effect. Tell me in this clip, what did you see on this car that you actually do not see in the current C8 Minutes Club? You got to pause it, pause it, because I don't know if you'll figure it out yet. Through the rear wheel openings underneath the car and through vents that we have added to the hatch. I'm not going to lie, I'm getting really good at taking these clips watch them through and breaking it down for you. If you take a look at this photo, what do you see? You take a look at the rear end, it looks like you see an active spoiler. It looks like it goes up, it looks like it goes down. That is something you do not see on a current C8 Minutes or Corvette. It is a pretty much steady, even spoiler on a current C8 Minutes Corvette, but on this one, it looks like it goes up and it looks like it goes down. So it looks like the next Corvette could possibly be the Z06 
or the hybrid version, we may have a very awesome active spoiler. Thanks everyone again for pushing that play button and joining me today. That will finish up this video of Chevrolet releasing the 2020 C8 mini engine convertible. They will also update you on a new possible Corvette with active aero. And I like how Tej broke it down and said they do aerodynamic testing for our safety because we are the ones that will be driving this awesome machine. So I'm looking forward to actually get behind on one of of these things. Looking forward to seeing you all get behind one of of these things. I want to thank you once again for pushing that play button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, what are you waiting for? Push that subscribe button, push that bell button right beside it so you get notification anytime you release a video. And when you do that, send me a picture of you doing that so I can post it in the videos all over the screen so we can all see who's joining the community and who has been a part of the community since day one. And once again, thank you for pushing that play button.